Hello YouTubers, what is up? Welcome to another video. And where are we today? Well, we are on in a beautiful spring day. The sky is blue. We are in lockdown. The tree is blossoming outside. It is truly beautiful. But inside my computer, we are in VS Code. And what does that mean for you? It means it's time for another Haskell IDE update. And the trick today, we'll be loading GHC into GHC IDE and we'll talk about some progress that we're making in that regard recently. So I load my GHC tree into GHC IDE. Let's see how we get on. In the last few months, myself and Pepe Bora and a few people have been working on making GHC IDE work better with big projects. What does this mean? We'll make it faster. We'll make it leaner and use less memory. We want to make um, it possible to work on projects like GHC and big industrial code bases. So let's get going. I've loaded the GHC project into my ID. We can already see it's passed the module as we have these uh, outline symbols here. And now it's type checking, as we can see by this processing bar at the bottom. Um, so how long is that going to take? Well, it took 16 seconds to load um, into um, VS Code, which is not bad for 533 modules, if I remember correctly. Now we're inside, let's have a hover. So the first hover takes a little longer, 1.3 seconds, but then subsequent hovers are quite fast, which is much better than the previous situation where we were hovering for two or three seconds each time. Um, so we've improved the situation in that regard to a great extent, so it's a lot faster now, comparable to other projects. Right, so we can, we've loaded into the ID how much memory we're we actually using here. Let's look. So we're going to HTOP and well, we're only at 2.5 gigabytes out of 16 gigabytes of memory. So things are not looking, not looking too bad, too bad on that front either, which is a great improvement for loading 500 modules um, compared to compared to before. And that is mainly thanks to Pepe for implementing support for interface files in GHC ID. So we're using a reasonable amount of memory, we're hovering without a care in the world. Let's try editing. So we're going to edit the file and then of course it recompiles and we have access to all the features of GHC ID. Um, we're going to replace that with get session. Oh no, 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 not get session, get session. And we can save, save the module. Okay, so we will look on GHC just like a normal code base. So uh, for another example, platform.arch, let's try jumping to the definition of platform.arch, right click, go to definition, that didn't work, let's try another one, um, tables next to code, will that work? Okay, so yes, I jumped tables to table next to code, which is in the GHC driver session, DHS, which used to be called din flags, rest in peace din flags, and we can hover over things in this module as well, of course we can, of course we can. Um, platform misc, where's that defined peak, peak definition, um, oh, that's over here. That's probably in dim flags as well. There we go. Back again. Right. So everything in like normal works in works in in the ID. It uses be smart memory. It's ready. It's ready for prime time. That's not all. Recently, I've been implementing multi-component support in GHC ID, and recent and even more recently, I have modified GHC's build system to support multi-component GHC ID. What does this mean? Well. The GHC project is split into components. For example, the, the template Haskell library, which is depended on by the main GHC library. Now I'm going to open a file in the template Haskell library, syntax.hs. So this contains the definition for all template Haskell and um, AST stuff. So now I've loaded this, it will be loaded into the same session as the main GHC library, so that I can, when I modify something in a template Haskell library, it, the changes are reflected immediately in the GHC library and you can jump to that jump between each component using the jump to definition right so this is now uh, appears to be loaded let's find something to hover over if we can right so we hover over report perfect right so this is now loaded loaded in um, of course if I modify something here then um, it will recompile as normal I get the get the Get the usual usual errors uh, but what is really interesting is that if i now load a module 
from GHD itself, which depends on template Haskell module, then I will be able to jump back directly back to where we just where we just came from. So in this module, is it this the th template Haskell to HS module turns a template Haskell AT into a into a um, GHD's AST. Okay, so this type new type ints d is defined in the template Haskell component, and in previously peaking definition would not work, but now it does. So that's a that's a huge huge positive for for mankind. I can look at the definition from from the number of components, um, and likewise and similarly, I can jump to the definition into the template Haskell syntax library, as we can see from this path, is in a completely different separate component. Okay, and if I was to modify the syntax.hs module in some manner, for example, if I decided that I did not want to import export foreign source line, then maybe this won't break anything. But if it did break anything, then it would report the fact that um, the module from the GHC library did not, didn't now didn't compile. So changes are immediately reflect, reflected in the in the other component. Right. So that's that's what I wanted to show you. Hover performance is now reasonable. Memory usage is now reasonable. Multi component. Is now usable, um, and how? Let's just dive into a bit to how this works. So, um, how does this work? So, I've modified the Hadrian build system to add a new target, which, when you call it, it it puts the arguments for that component into a file specified by the, the high BIOS output environment variable. So, if I call Hadrian high BIOS with gh uh, compiler ghc.hs, which is the first file we loaded in this little video. Then, when we run this command and we look at um, the output, then this is all the options which are used to load the library components. Okay, no tricks here. If I load in the, if I call the library, template Haskell, um, language, Haskell, template Haskell.hs, then I get all the options for the template Haskell component instead. And then GHCIDE smushes these together in a correct manner um, so that the right options are used to compile the right the right files. And then the changes in one component are reflected in the other. Okay. So that's all I wanted to show in this small video. Um, just to show off what we've what we've all been working on and how much progress we've made in the IDE space in recent times. So hopefully everyone remains in good health throughout these next few weeks and months, and hopefully we keep making great progress on the Haskell tooling story. <laughs>